Hey everyone, this is Matt from drawingtutorialsonline.com. In today's live class, I want to talk to you about gradations and uh, how to deal with gradations, specifically with, with a portrait background. Uh, the intention for today's class is not to do a finished drawing that's going to take me hours, uh, but to do more of a, a quick study with, with options for uh, background tonal gradations. Again, this is certainly one of the most uh, important things uh, that I get asked over and over and over again in the critique gallery uh, at drawingtutorialsonline.com. Somebody will uh, do a portrait, digital painting, or they'll do a charcoal drawing. Hey, Amit. Uh, and uh, they don't know what to do in the background. And, and the background becomes this issue, this thing that, uh, hey, Nancy, is just... Um, a little overwhelming and they don't want to screw up the drawing and it's just this white blank paper. Naveen, how are you? Ileana, how are you? Ileana, I hope I asked, answered your question in the podcast with the teaching. Uh, yeah, if you have any further questions about teaching, Ileana, just email me. I'd be more than happy to answer you in, in an email. That would be cool. Hey, Joseph, how are you this morning? Uh, Yeah, so uh, Ileana, if you have any questions, please e email, email me. So like this today, what I'm going to do here today is just more of a, a quick exercise. It's the type of thing that I would do in, in a classroom situation, but I would be doing it on newsprint paper with this uh, type of pencil. So you can see here on the monitor, it's this Derwent drawing. It's kind of like a China marker. It's ivory black 6700. And this thing gets a really rich black and, and you're able to, um, okay, cool. Ruka, how are you? Yeah, this one's ivory black. They have different colors, but what, what I do in, in, in the classroom is just do this. I, I'm just kind of giving everybody a chance to, to, to show up to the live stream before I get started with the actual drawing part. But if you miss it, not to worry, it'll be posted here on, on YouTube. If I decide to go a little further with this uh, lesson, I'll put it on the members website. Now, one more thing before we get started. I'll give everyone like one more minute to join us here on YouTube. Uh, this is how the hands came out from last week. And I didn't work on it long at all. You know, it was a really short day uh, with doing this drawing. And um, hey, Michael. And I, I just, uh, on the YouTube live stream, I, I didn't really incorporate Sandy. How are you? Um, much of the white charcoal, but I incorporated the white charcoal when I worked a little bit on a Facebook live stream. And I added um, two additional chapters in the members area at Drawing Tutorials Online. So this is how it came out. The intention was not to do a long drawing that was like six, seven hours. It was just to do something uh, that would teach about surface planes, light and shade, and a little bit of the white charcoal. Carmela, how are you, Carmela? Cool. All right. So um, let's get started. Okay. So uh, again, if people join us late, uh, they could always uh, check out the uh, video. It'll be on YouTube here. So what do we have? What, what are we looking at? We're looking at uh, a friend of mine. Her name is Erica, and she's a model at the School of Visual Arts. And uh, you can check out her Instagram at erica.nyc. And uh, Erica is uh, doing what everybody is doing in this COVID-19 situation. We're trying to earn a living and she's uh, taking pictures and um, purchasing some pictures from her to draw from. Uh, if you're interested and you want to collaborate with Erica, you can check out once again, her Instagram is erica.nyc. And uh, yeah, so uh, check it out. She's, I tried scrolling to the bottom of her Instagram. I, I just, I couldn't get there. Uh, the sound, uh, before I get started any further, sound is good. Just give me a, somebody give me a, Ileana, what about you? Sound is good for you? I know there's a little delay. Aurora, hi Aurora. Okay. Awesome. Okay, let's get started. So again, just to repeat, those of you guys who showed up a little late, um, today, the purpose of today's class is just to talk to you about how to deal with the white space around the portrait. Okay, uh, just gradations. Nice. Thank you, Ileana. So again, we look at Phoenix. Hello. Uh, 
it's a bit low, but the quality is fine. Okay, so maybe I'll just bring that just slightly closer. I'll make it just a little bit. Awesome. All right, gradations. Now let me lower the volume on my computer, by the way, because I, I'm hearing the little beeps and I don't want my microphone to pick that up. Cool, okay, so when you look at the photo reference, let's say you're drawing a portrait and, and you're gonna draw this portrait, right? You look at her and you look at her. Thanks, man. Uh, sound is great here. It's my birthday. Happy birthday, Dana. Cool, cool. So you, you look at this model and your job as the artist is to set up the value structure. Now you could say, okay, somebody asked me to draw a portrait of uh, their friend or my friend wants me to draw a portrait of their child or uh, perhaps um, you just want to do a portrait of your own child and you just want to do a portrait and you don't want to put anything fancy in the background. This photo is set up perfectly because uh, Erica and her boyfriend have a photography studio and they know how to set up a portrait. So what we see here is we have um, light skin, dark hair, middle tone shadow. Okay, uh, so her value ratios on her skin tone are light value ratios. The value ratios on her hair are fairly dark uh, value ratios. So the, now the background, it's a middle tone. Okay, one could argue that it is a dark middle tone. But you just first, when it comes to doing a portrait with a simple background, you just want to analyze the portrait. You always analyze where the light's coming from. So let, let's dive into it. Now let's let's ruin this, let's, this drawing. So the first thing I would do is say to myself, all right, let's do this. Let's just put in a, a little bit of the shading on the neck because the shading on the neck is going to be my middle tone, okay? So I just wanna do a little bit of this line that separates. Again, I'm not trying to be perfect with it. And shading, okay? So shading to me, there's all different values in her neck. There's a really great, do you guys see that crazy reflected light hitting her jawbone uh, on her neck? It's pretty powerful, but I'm not gonna worry about that just yet. That's something that a lot of people would cling on to, and that's a, just a huge distraction, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is value structure, and then we'll talk about the gradation in the background. So I'm gonna just use my diagonal pencil stroke once again. We've been talking about this now for the last three weeks in a row, that the quickest way to block in tone is with the uh, diagonal pencil stroke, just like this, back and forth, all the weight is on my hand. Okay, we have a little bit of light on her sternal mastoid right over here. Okay, and let me just be a little bit more clear with that because I want to make sure that the shadow shape is solid. So that's that's my decision, number one, that that's going to be my middle tone in, in the drawing. Um, okay, this could be a little bit lower, but again, I don't, wanna, I don't care so much about the perf perfect measurements. Now, on her hair, her hair is very dark, especially over here. So I just want to kind of glide into that. We have... Um, her hair is coming down. There's a really strong spotlight hitting her face. So I'm going to say that right about here is where I'm going to start with the dark. Now, for those of you who have tried this cold erase pencil, you're not going to get your richest dark dark with one pass. You kind of have to do it with two passes of the pencil and, and two coverings of the paper. So what I'm going to do first is just block in a, a middle tone. I can't tell you, this is just my opinion, every teacher that you listen to, Hannah from South Korea, Korea. hey Hannah, I have a lot of South Korean students um, and they're all extremely warm and, and super, super nice. Um, so let's just do this, okay? So that's our first go through. Now, what I would say we have is a light, a light middle tone and a middle tone. So now it's my job as the teacher to work a little bit faster and try to just get the value structure. So this is, I'm really doing my very best to simplify. And we'll talk about the gradation here in the moment in the background, and I'll give a couple of different options. But I didn't want to do the whole drawing before the live stream. I, I just wanted to set it up so it was easy for me to shade so I can get this done in a timely manner for you guys. Now, I could use the brush, and the brush would make this go by so much faster. Now I'm squinting, okay, 
and I'm just putting in a light middle tone. So her hair over here is darker than her skin, where the light is hitting her skin. Okay, so I want to get rid of the white paper. And now I'm going to just curve my pencil strokes around. And most likely, we're going to go over the dark part of her hair one more time. And then we will deal with this background tone. So let's just kind of get this in. She's got a beautiful, beautiful shape to the hair. Okay, and, and I love that. We can do a little bit of tone right over here in the ear. There's a little shape right there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this, and I'm just going to make it one value darker. And I'm going to feather it away because we're not going to do an entire portrait drawing here. And uh, I'm going to just go a value darker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, feeling sad, you have to say hi to me. Sandy, how are you? What do you mean you're feeling sad? There's no feeling sad on a live stream. <laughs> okay, so let's... Um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now, the key with these color feeling said, the key with the color race pencils, this thing here, that I have that little kind of uh, thing covered with tape because it gets really sticky and, and gummy there, and I hate getting stickiness on my hand. So we, we can take a poll. I, I feel as though that there's two different types of human beings on the planet, those who don't mind sticky fingers and those who hate sticky fingers. I hate when my fingers get sticky. And uh, you can see over here with this Polarase pencil, you see how the, the barcode sticker is getting all pulled off and it drives me nuts, especially when the pencil gets smaller, that it gets sticky. And they used to put the barcode down near the, the tip of the pencil and that drove me nuts. So with the Polarase pencils, you have to press down really hard to get the ridge dark. So you see, I just sharpened it. And when you sharpen it, now, do you see, like, I, I can easily get the richer dark, okay? So give me um, a, a couple seconds here just to get my third value established. And I'm probably not going to shade the whole thing perfectly. In other words, if you've been watching me for a while, what I meant to say is I'm not going to match the values, okay? Because then the whole video this morning here, the whole live stream, will be about me trying to shade in a solid way and matching the values, and then you'll you'll not be happy about that. Okay, so we right now on our drawing, we have solid values. I'm almost finished here with a solid dark, okay? And we have a, a solid middle tone, and I'm happy about that. So now, with our image, let's get started, because I can come back to the hair, and I can dark it in a, a little bit more after we just do a little bit with the background. Now, that, that's another thing here that I, I really want to share with you guys is you want to also be very careful not to work on one section of your drawing for too long a period of a time, especially when you're planning out your backgrounds. I mean, this is, this is where it's at right now. We have our values down, okay? We have our dark, we have our middle tone, and our light. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in a little bit of a border. I'm, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to maybe do a quick like little square. I want to be on the monitor. I'll show you how big this is in a moment. Okay, now that line on my paper is straight and it's level. Ah, I see. <laughs> yeah, I kept missing you. You know, I, um, I shortened the comments. So, hey, Michael. Sometimes there's comments all the way up there that I, I don't even see, Sandy. So uh, thank you. Yeah, if I if I miss if you have a question and I and I miss it, um, and it's getting towards the end of this live stream, ask me towards the end. If if, if you ask me already in the comment section and I miss it, because at the end I, I I try to look at the comments a little bit more. Now, okay, so this on my drawing table is perfectly level. Uh, so it should look like this on your monitor, but it, it looks crooked. But that's the angle of my camera. There's no way I can get rid of those crooked lines on my camera or else the camera would be my eyes, and that's just not going to happen. And this is level on my drawing as well. Okay, now this drawing is, her face is tiny. It's three and a quarter inches. The drawing itself is about four and a half inches, we'll say. 
Okay, so this is a really good size to, to practice. Now, um, especially gradations in the background. So what you can do, not, okay, step number one, gradations. Super duper easy way to handle it. A portrait like this uh, is just a top to bottom gradation. Let me just put in her shoulder very quickly. So looking at that negative space, her shoulder kind of tilts up and um, yep, something like that. So I'm just gonna do, um, I'm gonna test the waters, okay? Again, I, I really apologize. I, I wish I can get this level. Just join, can you tell me what pencil you're using? So I have all of the materials in the comments right below the video. It's just a Prismacolor Polarace. Um, it's the pencil that I use all the time. It's my favorite go-to pencil. But yeah, you, you can check out um, right below. I'm getting a little bit smarter in my older age. Um, I put details in the comments section. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm just doing a simple, very, very light gradation, and it's gonna go down to very light, okay? Now, I wanted this gradation, Greg, good morning. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so, okay, six hours ahead. Okay, that's, yep, okay, I gotcha. So just doing, this is a, a very, Timid, Let, let's say the word timid. I'm being very timid with this right now just because I'm going to do a couple different gradations for you on the same drawing. So I don't want to go in for the kill with my darkest dark um, first. Okay. So what do we have? We have right now on our monitor, we have a, a portrait that is set up to be with three let's call it four values. The hair is the dark within reason. We could make it really dark, but it's just gonna take forever. Um, same here, Craig, same here. Hope all is well. Um, we see the dark. I'm gonna call this, I'm generalizing now, the middle tone. This is the light, this is the light. And one could argue that this is a light middle tone, okay? Now, I could most definitely go a little bit more with the value on her neck. There's a lot of reflected light over there on the front of her neck. So that, step number one, gradation from top to bottom. And here, here are some things not to do, okay? So I'm, I'm really transparent with you guys. I don't hide anything. I tell you when I draw like garbage for whatever reason and I, and I'm, and I tell you when I'm happy with a drawing. So this was my practice uh, first couple lines on the paper this morning. My hand felt like a brick. So here's what not to do when you are shading. This is what people do. Like they'll shade the background and it's almost like the background. There's a force field around the, the portrait and they do not want the background tone to touch the portrait. That is one of the worst ways to do a background tone where I call this right over here a halo. Okay, and then what you'll do is you'll shade just like, not you, but somebody in general who's struggling with backgrounds. <laughs> okay, uh, so what the artist does is then they'll go like a little bit more right up to the edge. It's going up to the edge of what you are drawing. That is so, so very important. And then they'll shade a little bit lighter over here. They're timid. They don't want to mess up the line. And it still looks like a halo. So. I think you want to be very much aware of the halo. I, I'm going to call it, it's like a title of, of, of a new novel. This is a really good title. Uh, the halo um, conclusion or the, the halo process. It sounds like a, a drama uh, in this thriller. So, okay, I have a little bit of a halo, but I'm going to now do one more go through. So this is our top to bottom gradation. So let's do a little bit more. I'm using the side of the pencil. Okay, I'm not using the brush. If I use the brush, it would be so much easier. Okay, so let's just go right up to the edge of the contour of her face. Let's get rid of the white paper. If we have to use a little circular pencil stroke, we can. And you see what I'm doing here? Now, this is very much a classic and I, I can do some diagonal pencil strokes. I, I don't need to be so perfect about the horizontals. You know, on within the members area of drawingtutorialsonline.com, I have the painting 
Tutorials Online section. And in the Paint and Tutorials Online section, there is the begin here step by step. And there's one video on how to paint gradations. If you're really into this, you should check it out. Okay, so that's our first pass through. That is a very, very acceptable way um, to do a background tone. So now if we come on down over here, we can do a little bit of the shadow on her sternomastoid over here. We can bring this down. We can make this a light value. So with portraits, this here, where I'm tapping my pencil, hopefully you guys can see that, is where you would lose an edge to the portrait. So this is a very, very simple way to go about doing a gradation, top to bottom, okay? Uh, now, what I should do here, uh, of course, I don't have my icon near me. I was just going to take a quick picture um, of this, and of course, my icon is over there. So, um, uh, live stream alert, spoiler alert, I'm going to get up and go get my icon because I want to take a picture of this, okay? I'll be right back. It's right here. so funny when I do the live streams, I feel like I'm watching something on the news and like something happens very wrong when they're doing like the weather and somebody trips or something like that. Was your initial gesture when you started the uh, drawing the portrait? Um, yes, but I did that today or off camera because I didn't want today's uh, lesson to be about uh, trying to get like perfect proportions and all that. I, I'll, I'll show you um, a couple of them and, and how I started it because I, I drew her last night as well. So let, let me um, just take a quick picture of her because I want to share this and I shouldn't be doing this with my iPhone, but, oh, no, okay. I thought it would show up. Now, let's do something radically different, okay? Radically different now would be, so let's do this right here. This is representing our image. This would be a top to bottom gradation, okay? Now, the next one that I wanna do is I really want to do what is called um, a reverse gradation, okay? So the reverse gradation, so if this is Erica's head, that little circle represents her head, then, um, and this is the shadow side of her head, Hopefully this isn't too small for you guys on YouTube. Um, then I'm going to go darker on this side, and I'm going to gradate to from um, left to right. So if I go a little bit darker with this, so the shadow side on the portrait is there. So that means I'm going to go with the background um, from left to right. So and I'm going to do this this way now on a diagonal because this is just going to be much much easier for me to shade this way. So my hand isn't going to get in the way. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my very best to make the background tone to the left of her darker. Now, I'm gonna lose my contour just a little bit as I do this, and I want this to gradate. Let's gradate across, okay? And so this is the second way. Now, I wanna be careful over here. I, I don't wanna lose my drawing too much. I can, bring this all the way down. I don't need to make this as dark as my line. So I love lines, and you guys who have been watching me for a while know that I love to draw with an outline. Uh, it's just something that has developed for me over the years. I just, uh, maybe it's, I don't say maybe, I definitely think it's because of I, my influence. I love Muka so much, and he does the outline. So I, I would separate the tone just a little bit more with the outline. But also when I do these videos on, on YouTube, uh, people will always visit the live stream and they'll ask me, why are you putting an outline there? Shouldn't you just put a tone next to a tone? And for a painter, the answer is, yeah, sure, I should do a tone next to a tone. But uh, the outline is just a very stylized way of, of drawing and, and I like it. But if you're looking for more of a painterly, atmospheric look, it's better if you do a tone next to a tone. So you can see now I have a little bit of a gradation, but I'm keeping the integrity. I'm, I'm, I'm not being a lunatic with this. I'm being very subtle. I'm keeping the integrity of the light, the middle tone, and the dark, okay? So now, I not only do I have a top to bottom gradation, but I also have a reverse gradation, okay? So let me resharpen. 
And um, let's do it one more value down. So I, I'm saving my darkest dark uh, towards the end of this live stream. And actually, let's see here. Okay, we're doing good. I'm not going to go super duper long with this today. Uh, maybe 45 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that. And um, I'll, I'll show you like how I warmed up with this last night. It, the, that drawing is right underneath this one. So I, I could go darker with this. Now, um, I'll ruin it at the end with the brush. I, I love doing that because if I, if I use the brush, I'm, oh my God, it's just really going to come alive. Now, again, I hate this that it's crooked because I hate crooked things. Um, and it's crooked. But it's not crooked in my studio. It's just, it's, there's an impossibility of getting the angle for the camera perfectly level. Uh, it, it's just when you have to, I could get it level if my head was here. And uh, it's just it's just not going to happen. I could tilt the paper, okay, and I could tilt my photo reference, and, and I can do that, and that would make it level. But it's never going to be square nor level. So now I'm just trying to make it parallel with my drawing table here, so it looks the same as it did before. Let me just tilt it a little bit more. Okay, so what can we do differently now uh, with this? So let's add the outline. My hands are really really shaky. Um, just I say uh, shaky my hands are shaky all the time because I, I have some serious disc problems in my neck cervical vertebrae discs Hitting my nerves which kind of creates some numbness in my fingers. This is new to me this year uh, This is the latest drama in my life uh, so I'm trying to do some therapy to um, calm those nerves and loosen up those restrictions in my neck uh, so uh, fun stuff being a human being so what I'm going to do here is just, uh, now I'm going to do, I'm not doing a black outline. I'm just refining the outline, okay? So I'm going to refine the outline. Notice my hand is on the paper because it's going to balance, put all the weight of my arm on my hand and not the pencil point. So let's come on down. So I'm, I'm looking 50% of the time, at least hopefully, at her if you follow my eyes. You can see that I'm really looking more at her and less at my paper. So it's more of that like rapid eye movement and I'm trying. But I just want more of a contour near her profile. So now what's happening is I'm getting some of the crevices of the paper. Okay, so that, that helped me a little bit. Okay, now let's do a value darker. So at this point, you can assess your piece and when I assess it, I could use the eraser over here where I'm working right now on her hair. Okay, so I'm trying to draw today. Oh, you do, Susan. Okay, because I, I, yeah, well, I, I don't like that I have no hair at the top of my head. That kind of, that's, I love um, that too. Like getting old is just, I'm trying to smile as I get older and these things are happening to me and um, <laughs> it sucks. Okay, it totally sucks. So uh, it, it is what it is. But yeah, I appreciate your your compliment. Um, it means a lot to me. I don't know how I'm gonna do the hairdo moving forward now, uh, because to get it cut short, I mean, I gotta go there like every couple weeks, and um, it's a hassle. Okay, so we just went. I, I I just absolutely adore this model's hair. How it comes back. It just reminds me of an 1800s painting in the Met, and it just looks so cool. Okay, and uh, yeah, love it. So now her hair is really not attached to her head. Her ha hair is feeling a little bit separated from her skin, so I need to go darker. So now let's do a reverse gradation, a little bit more top to bottom. So we're going to go darker with her neck, and this is going to um, be so, so very cool. Okay, a little darker underneath her ear. That sternomastoid light needs to be moved over a little bit more. So I got that in the wrong spot. Okay, so do you guys see what I'm doing here? Um, setting up your artwork is about setting up shapes. It's, um, yes, it's, so there, there's always, let me go get my friend, one moment. Okay, my friend is waiting for me at the door. I'll, I'll get her. Come here, Trops. Come on, Chops. Come here. No. 
Okay, at risk of um, getting full of dog hair, so I've got my friends here, Truffles. Hey, Truffles, you see yourself on camera? What's going on? Who's that? Who's over there? What's going on? <laughs> she, uh, she has to be around a human being, and if she's not around a human being, she's just not happy. Uh, so my wife went out, and uh, so she had to, She was at the, my door crying. So you ready to go take a nap on your lounge chair? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so hopefully this was the pencil that I was using. Um, are you, do you guys ever do that when you uh, get up when you're working um, and you put your glasses down somewhere and then you come back? Thank you, Amit and Nancy. Uh, you come back and, and, and you don't know where you put your stuff. Like I get up all the time if I want to go get a drink of water or go to the bathroom or whatever when I'm working. And I uh, put my glasses down, and then when I come back into my studio, it's like a half an hour of trying to find my glasses. Uh, okay, so I digress. Let's just do the reverse gradation from top to bottom. So this is just all tone. Now, I might, if I'm feeling brazen, at the end of this live stream, share with you a book that is one of my favorites um, for tone, pencil drawings, and it's uh, the guy's name, and maybe you can um, look at for it after the live stream. Just do a Google image search. Uh, I think the book is uh, Paris Burdick. Yeah, Burdick, B-U-R-D-I-C-K. There you go, good morning. Um, so, uh, Taris Burdick, and I'm forgetting the name, Carl Van Allsberg, Carl Van Allsberg, and his tone next to tone if you like this style of drawing more than the line, you have got to check out. I'll never find it. Yeah. His tone next to tone is phenomenal. And I don't know if I'd get in trouble showing his book on the live stream, but um, we'll see. I'll see if I'll look for it um, after. Okay, so you see what's happening now? I've put in some um, tone. Yeah, all the time, getting up and forgetting your stuff. <laughs> now I'm going a little bit darker with her neck. Notice how I've changed the positioning of my hand on the pencil because I, I, I want to keep her neck very light. And right now I, I don't want to press down really super duper hard. But you see how um, now I can do a little bit more with the reverse gradation. I feel a little bit more confident with my edge with that pencil stroke, and that helped a lot. So I'm going to go darker over here. And there's another thing that I wanted to share with you on that other little sketch. I, I'm going to use the brush in a little bit just because it's going to make everything so much quicker and everything's going to get so much darker. So with this thing now, uh, we are doing, what I'm trying to show you, if we come on down over here, is I'm trying to now go on also a diagonal. So this one is going from left to right, the gradation. This one's going on a diagonal. You know, as soon as I draw a straight line, it's so ugly. And this one's going from top to bottom. So those are three different ways to use a gradation. From top to bottom, like how we started, uh, a gradation from left to right. I should take another picture. So I want to show this, put this on the website in stages. Okay, that was my mother texting me. Cool. All right. So top to bottom, left to right, reverse gradation. And now what we can do is we can start in this. If we, her head is tilted. So the third gradation is following with the gesture of the head. Okay, so I'm going to come on in and, and go a little bit darker on the top left. Okay, it's going to come on down from the top left. And it's still gradating from, uh, there's still a gradation from top to bottom, but now we're trying to be a little bit bolder. Uh, could I shade the whole background in the dark? Of course. Could I make it one solid value like what you see in the photo reference? Sure, I can do that as well. But I'm just trying to show you guys some dynamic ways to do this that are very subtle, okay? There, there's nothing really complicated. It, it's just all about you 
the artist making a decision what's best for you, what's best for your style, and what is best for your um, the job or the drawing that you're doing now in terms of your lifestyle. How much time do you have to work on this? And is it going to just take you forever to do this? Now, let me show you another thing on this scrap piece of paper. When people do shading, let, let's say they're going to, they start to shade. So we have our model's hair and, and it kind of comes down and uh, we have our neck and it goes like that. And when people start to shade, they'll do this. Is the final, is this the final drawing? Um, yeah, this is, this is going to be it for today, this uh, height of the drawing. I'm not going to do a long drawing today like I've been doing the previous few weeks. This is more exercise driven today on uh, YouTube. So what I'm trying to do each week is try to give a little bit of variety. So I think if I keep doing a long drawing each and every week, um, where the point of the exercise is just to do a finished piece um, and to you know make the measurements perfect and all that, I think after a while I'm gonna start to bore people. So what I'm trying to do is uh, in, influx some diversity into the live stream. And this one's gonna be much looser. This one is gonna be the final drawing. Uh, it's gonna be more of just like a study on how to do gradations. So with this, people will shade, right? And they'll go up, they'll still, they'll go up to the edge, but then they kind of leave the shading like that. So what do you look at in this sketch? So you look at the energetic line right over there. Okay, now it's less about the portrait and it's more about this scribbly line in the background. So what, we, what we've talked about in terms of what not to do when you're doing a portrait and the background, that's the point of this lesson, the background, is don't leave a halo where the tone, you're almost like afraid to touch the edge of the contour of the portrait. Don't do the halo thing. That is awful, okay? Don't do your line where you shade in and it's very energetic and what we're getting is light in between your pencil strokes. Then this is the energetic line and the viewer will look here. They will not bother to look at your portrait. So those are two things of what not to do with the background tone, in, in my opinion. Um, and then the third thing, and, I, and I've seen people do this as well. Let me just erase this out. Okay, um, I've seen people do this and let me get my brush. I okay. don't know where all of these eraser crumbs go. Don't know where that happens. Is they'll do the tangent. So let's say her nose is, is coming out over here and they'll do the tone and the tone is kind of starting to become like this thing that surrounds the head, just like this. And it almost starts to encapsulate uh, the portrait. Okay, and, and that's not a good thing to do either. So it's like this tone is almost touching um, yeah, absolutely. Do a finer tone. So, uh, Kuzev, I mean, boy, that's a tough name to pronounce. Kuzev. I'd rather use a finer hatch or just a mild tone in the background so the focus stays on the face. Yes, that's the point of this whole entire lesson here this morning on YouTube is that your background tone is there to promote what you are drawing. So if you're drawing a still life, uh, with a vase and a couple pieces of fruit, the background tone, like this background tone is the worst background tone. It is so distracting and it start, it has the halo. Okay. It, it is kind of suffocating the figure and putting, um, this shape that is encapsulating the portrait. And it just looks like some weird, funky geometric shape now. And it has this scribbly energetic line that is the most distracting thing in the world, okay? So this is the type of tone that you wanna do. Now, if I use this scrap piece of paper, okay, sorry, let's use it here like this. So you just have to think about, if this is your portrait, let me just bend that, one moment. If that little thing is your portrait, and here is your neck, and those are your shoulders, and this is your box, you can also think about rhythm kind of going behind the portrait, okay? So you can start to think about, well, you know what? I want to do a little bit of tone over here and I want it to gray date, gray date away, feather away. And then I'm going to pick it up with the rhythm over here. 
and I'm going to just very quickly start to feather away and go a little bit darker on my rhythm line. So that's another way to do a background tone. You do the background tone with rhythm. Now, do you have to keep the, uh, the background light paper? You could if it's a quick sketch. Now, let's say it's a 20 minute life drawing and you're in a classroom situation. Uh, maybe you're just gonna do a quick rhythm tone and you're gonna keep this way because you don't have all the time in the world to shade. You know, you could um, put tone here and you could put tone there, no problem. And you still have the rhythm. Okay, so that is really something for you to take into consideration, doing a rhythm line, especially with a portrait that is highly symmetrical, okay? It's right in the middle, it's very static, it's very stiff. This rhythm is really a, a very, very important thing. Now, uh, I should be writing this down, and I will at the end. So let's do this right over here. Sorry, I'm all over the place here today. So we have top to bottom, we have reverse, we have a diagonal, and now let me uh, get a sharper pencil. Perfect. Now we have a rhythm. So I'm going to call this an S curve. So let's try to do something like that. This is for behind a portrait. Okay, now the last thing that I can teach you here this morning is a different type of uh, portrait. So if we do a different type of background, I should say, let's say here's our head, okay, and here's our head and shoulders, and this is going to be our composition. We get this on the monitor for you guys. What we could do is a compositional shape. Okay, this is fun too. So our compositional shape could be this is our shape. Can you guys see that? So this is where my tone is gonna be primarily, in this shape. Now, is the shape gonna be so perfect like that, where I have that hard edge line right over here where I'm tapping my pencil? No, absolutely not. It's gonna be soft and it's gonna gray day down, but this could be the compositional shape. And then we use the pencil, let's just gray date it. Let's get rid of that dark line. Okay, and let's go a little darker and gradate it. But that is our compositional shape. So now we say to ourselves, okay, this is gonna be the shadow side of the figure's portrait and the shadow side of the neck. And, and once we do the shadow side versus the light side, it starts to make a little bit more sense, uh, the structure of the background tone, okay? And I, I can't tell you how vital this is in terms of if you're a portrait painter and you are, you chose, uh, you photo, you're photographing your own model in your studio or your camera, you are going to uh, really plan all this stuff out in the photography stage. If you're looking, if you're not a portrait painter, when would you use a background and when would you not? Uh, okay. Uh, let me finish my thought and then I will answer that question. That's a great question. Uh, so let's say you are on, uh, you have to do a portrait uh, for practice, but you're not a photographer and you don't want to take pictures of anybody. You don't have time for that. And you just go on Google and you do an image search. You should be thinking about the background as you're doing your image search in terms of the photography that you choose to select. Okay. Uh, this is going to be called our compositional shape. Now, let me just do that over here, and then I will answer Aurora's um, question about um, when to not use a background tone. Okay, so that a compositional shape could be any type of shape. It does not need to be the shape that I just drew right here now. Okay, so I'm just trying to give you guys options for a simple portrait, simple still life. Now, for me, do I, when would I not do a background tone is the question. When I have limited time to do my piece and um, the purpose of the piece is not to be a finished piece, but to be more of a study, okay? 
that is one time I would never do a background tone because I have limited time. It's not going to be a study. I'm not looking to create atmosphere. Uh, none of that stuff. If I, if I look kind of behind me. Um, okay. Let me get two pieces of art. Bear with me. Uh, bear with me. Okay, with her, she has no background tone. Okay, if I can put this into the camera. So that's just a study. There's no background tone over there. Uh, and I just really wanted to focus in on her. Okay, now this old illustration. This is an old illustration from maybe 1994, um, maybe 1995. I wish I would have dated it. Uh, let me put it down over here. Will that? Okay, cool. So this is, you see the gradation in the background on the lockers, okay? So yeah, it's crooked on the screen. I go like that. See how his face just got more symmetrical? Because I'm tilting the artwork towards um, the viewer. So this is a very old painting, 1994 perhaps. The light is coming from below, so I wanted the lockers to go dark, okay? And if I show it to you this way, you can get a better view of, of the painting. Well, that's the better view. Let's see, let me move over. You see the subtle gradation in the background. My apologies. This is harder than it looks. So I would do a background for a finished piece. I would not do a background if I had limited time and I was just working on a study, okay? Now, when I'm working, uh, so I've worked with this model, Erica. Uh, I, I met Erica this year and we worked together a lot, okay? And um, I did so many 10 minute figure drawings of her, uh, 20 minute figure drawings of her. I, I never did a background tone. Maybe, maybe, maybe what I would do is just scribble uh, a, a little bit of a, of a background tone um, here and there but I, I, I wouldn't go too crazy with it. Now, let, let me share with you, um, I should really write this down. My writing is horrendous, okay? But I'm gonna write it down. You got it, Aurora. So we did, um, let me get a sharper pencil. Pencil, 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 that is pre-sharpened. Top to bottom. Gradation. We did what is called a reverse, I'm just going to abbreviate, gradation. We did a diagonal uh, gradation. We did a uh, S-curve or a curve gradation. We did um, a, compositional, a compositional shape. Let's just abbreviate comp shape. So those are the four different ways uh, that you can do a gradation and five different ways that you can do a gradation in the background. And uh, this is for a simple piece of art. Now you could add textures. You know, what, what, what is she, what is behind the model? Is there a curtain behind the model? Is there um, an old, uh, stucco wall that has all of this funky texture, okay? What is behind the model? And you could make a decision. I'm just trying to set this thing up here so it's level for me. It's crooked for you, it's level for me. I hate that aspect of filming or drawing. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, that was oils that painting. That was back in the day, man. Do you sometimes make um, corrections to a photograph using your imagination? Yeah, absolutely. So um, like over here, there's a lot going on with her jaw, with the reflected light. I don't think I would uh, make the reflected light on her jaw that vibrant. I think I would tone it down a little bit. Yeah, like that band of light under her chin. If I tried to draw that, it would look weird. Yeah, absolutely. So we have the rim light. So there's, there's a powerful spotlight hitting this model. It's coming down, it's hitting her chest, and it's bouncing into the jawline. 
as well as her neck. So you as the artist could decide to incorporate the reflected light or to leave it out. Okay, what I would probably do is experiment a little bit with it, but yeah, it could look weird. And uh, over the years of doing art, only you will decide what's gonna look weird to you and what's not gonna look weird. Sometimes the body, like especially hands. Um, I remember years ago when I used to do the young adult book covers, uh, there were some young kids uh, that they were like double jointed. So they would do a pose and their elbow would be bent backwards and I'd be like, oh my God, that looks so strange. But in real life, they were double jointed. So I, I would change that. Uh, I wouldn't copy that where their arm, their elbow looks like it's kind of bending backwards. Would you use the charcoal white pencil here? No, I, I would not because this is white paper. Okay, I would not use. So what I would do instead is I would use my kneaded eraser the most. Okay, and uh, what, what I could do is I could kind of blend this for you with the brush and uh, we can have a lot more fun with this and I can pull out some stuff with the background with the needed eraser. Now, let's talk about one other thing with your portrait backgrounds and this is uh, super important and it's very helpful for you. So what I showed you, where is that piece of paper? Let, let me be extreme with this. So what I'm gonna do here now is with this portrait, I am going to outline it. 100%. And when you outline things 100%, I'm not saying always because in life there's no absolutes and everybody has a different style and there's so many different things to take into consideration. But all I can say is from my experience, when I outline with a dark line or a different way for me to say this is when my portrait drawing has a hard edge, right, all around it, it's the portrait, the person being painted or drawn is separated from the environment and there's no atmosphere. So what you want to do is make a decision, okay, that's going to be my hard edge here and then in the shadow I'm going to lose the edge and I want to have the value of something on the portrait the same value as something into the background. Yeah, um, no I will put it in the notes, I forgot to do that. Um, it's Erica E-R-I-C-A dot N-Y-C. Okay, she's got a phenomenal Instagram. Um, the pictures are just some of my best favorite pictures ever. Okay, so do you see how we're gonna call this our lost edge? And this is our hard edge. Okay, so you, you don't wanna outline 100% because then you have no lost edge. Now, I could argue that point and I can say, well, over here, I'm going to make the background tone the same value as that side plane of her head. And now that outline is still there, but I've weakened it because there's a same similar value next to a similar value. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you, Joyce. So just remember, whether you're doing a still life, all of these rules are very fundamental. And they apply to just about everything. If you're doing a, a figure painting, a painting of a still life, a portrait painting, uh, what else? Even, a, even an interior space. Uh, it's really important that you lose an edge and that you have a hard edge. If everything is outlined completely, it doesn't matter what type of background tone you do. Your, your piece is just going to look so stiff. Okay. Now, let's, let's close this. Um, sorry. Cool, I almost hit the camera with the paper. Now, where do we have a lost edge on this portrait? We have a lost edge. Let me see where I'm at with my time here. It's usually at like an hour. People are like, okay, Matt, I got it. I've had enough. <laughs> um, we're losing an edge where that line is, that white line on the photo reference on her, below her chin, on her neck. So I'm going to make this a similar value to my background where I'm doing this with my pencil. And that is going to be my lost edge. Now notice I don't have a dark outline over there. I have a very timid, weak outline because I, I, I don't want that to be my main focus. Now, I, I like her neck. The long neck is cool. I'd rather have the, the more of the harder edge on the interior muscle here, okay, if I was going to spend more time on this piece. I could also do the hard edge here with a line. So really just trying to study that. 
and come on down to the profile. And now we start to get into your personal style of art. Okay. Um, now I could loosen up the edge of the hair and put in some softness on the edge because hair is not hard edged. It's soft edged. So if you struggle with backgrounds, okay, um, Susan, just use one of these techniques and keep it simple. And uh, I was just, I did so many coaching videos this week for people and I don't remember, it was such a hectic week. Like I wasn't feeling good. My body was acting weird with my neck and all that, all these weird sensations in my hands with my nerves. And I did so many coaching videos, but uh, one of the things was just about trying to be simple with the shapes in your drawing. It, you know, I, I think it's almost, we're going on close to two months now that I've been doing the live classes. I started the live classes on Zoom and then I immediately stopped using Zoom because the recording quality was just god awful. And um, it seems like every class, except for how to earn multiple streams of income, and how to draw a portrait out of your imagination. Those two classes, all the other ones, I talked about shading in a solid way. And uh, this one is continuing that trend because this is how you make a strong, powerful image is you shade in, in a solid way. Now, let me show you, let's, let's just do this. Let, let's do it for fun, okay? And let's use the brush. Where is my brush? Cool. So we could really make this atmospheric now um, in the remaining time. Let's say I stay and, and I work uh, maybe five to ten more minutes. Is that going to work for you guys or do you kind of get the point? Let me know, okay? Because I, I could show you a couple more things with the eraser and the brush to create more atmosphere. And you just have to think of this almost like um, this is how you would do it with a pencil. And uh, I can show you how I would do it as a painter, okay? So um, let, let's just kind of dive into this. So now if I wanted to, I can get rid of all of the tooth and the texture. And I could be very, very mindful of trying to get even more of a gradation with the brush. Would you put the reflective light on her neck to make it look rounder? I would, but I would not, um, make this dark line on her jaw basically what i'm trying to say is i, I wouldn't make it so contrasty I, I i would kind of um tone that contrast down a little bit okay so what i'm doing here i should have photographed it i'm such a fool fool okay photograph it after the fact fool okay cool so let's just, so you see what I'm doing here now with the brush? I am not, don't worry about not losing an edge. I'm going to lose an edge right into her jaw. And that is going to enable your portrait drawings, your still lifes, your figure drawings to become one with the background, become one with the environment. Okay, so now I'm going to just darken her hair a little bit here. And I'm going to darken her hair up top. Okay. And let's do it over here as well. So I still have my gradation. I didn't abandon that. It's just looking more now like a soft impressionistic painting. So let me use a different brush uh, and let's push uh, with a circular motion. So circular motions are really good for gradations. Keep her face very light. Now I could push the darker value, okay? And I now I would resharpen my pencil and I'd come on in and I would do another layer. I meant the neck, not the jaw. Yeah, I, I would have a, a gradation on her neck, uh, no doubt. I, I would make the front plane of her neck a little bit lighter than the center of her neck. Um, this I'd make this would be my solid shape right over here, I, but I, I wouldn't make it so solid from left to right. Okay. 
And now if I wanted to, um, and this is getting more into doing a, a finished piece in terms of the background. So you would, now it's about layering, okay? So I'd start to layer in and um, try to make my gradation a little bit more simple. Okay, and make it a little bit more even. And I can use a circular pencil stroke. There's so many different things that, that I can do now. Uh, but that is the fundamentals of it all. I could also come on in and do another layering for hair. And, and if I wanted to make the piece very three-dimensional, you have to have a dark dark, okay? If you don't have a true, true dark in your piece, it's not gonna look that three-dimensional. So I can sit here for a very long time, which I will not do on the video here today for you on YouTube, but I can sit here for a very long time and make this happen in terms of making her portrait look even more dimensional by going super dark. So the, um, the painting that I did, what, what I showed you, I, I did 100% uh, of all of my illustrations for 18 years of an illustration career on illustration board. And I still have all my paintings. They've held up over time. They have not deteriorated, but I protect them from light. Uh, light will deteriorate paper. Can you take screenshots later throughout the video if you are, because um, I don't know if I'm going to do uh, Facebook later. I'll see. I haven't decided yet today. It, it'll be off the cuff if, if I do. I just wanted to do a different sort of lesson today, not one where I was going to devote my entire Saturday to doing a long drawing, although there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just trying to give you guys like a little bit of variety. Now, with the hair, people always ask me, when do you use a blending stump? I very rarely use a blending stump. I uh, would use it in a small little area over here. I would push this into the tooth of this paper to really try to make that a solid dark. Okay, and she's starting to get more and more atmospheric. She's very painterly. Now, one last thing here, and then I'll show you my practice drawing and, and I'll show you a couple very, very simple ways um, to do a, a, a quick little uh, linear tonal um, that's an oxymoron, not linear tonal, but something, a quick little background when you're doing a life drawing. So what I find is that when I go over my edge with a dark line, something about that just finishes off the piece. And again, I understand this is crooked. And this is really good practice for you as well to try to do a straight line. And see how I'm just do, doing a long line and I'm moving my hand back and forth. And now over here, I want to have a long top to bottom line to kind of frame out the piece. I make my students do this in the classroom. I make them frame out the piece with a really dark line and it's so much fun. So let me show you a drawing that I have under a couple pieces of paper, okay? Bear with me. Um, we'll move that over. This, uh, this piece of paper that I have here is like a cushion. So I, I like drawing on pads like within drawing pads because the paper underneath acts like a shock absorber for your pencil and uh, sometimes when you just put one piece of paper on something hard like my monitor here uh, it, it takes away the softness of it all. So this was um, my sketch yesterday uh, just warming up okay and I'll try to talk about um, bear with me let me just move this so first thing is just a quick figure, just warming up, warming up. This was last night when I was figuring out whether or not I even wanted to do this with the live stream. So sometimes, let, let's say this is in a live drawing class. Again, the focus of today's class is how to draw, what to do with your background in a portrait. Okay, so we talked about five different ways to handle it. We talked about what not to do. Let's say this is a life drawing. And, and you did this in class, and, and this drawing took you 20 minutes to complete. And you, the model's gonna stop posing and you don't have time to work on it after class. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just indicate like a little bit of a tone, just like that, and I'll feather it away. I don't want it to become a distraction. And um, 
I just want there to be like a little bit of tone against her light forehead. And then I'll feather it away and I'm done. And in essence here, what I'm doing um, is I'm doing, I'm picking up from her shoulder shadow here and I'm creating this diagonal, okay? And so that is another thing that, that you can do. Um, if it's just a, a 20 minute life drawing in class, you don't have time. Uh, I, I haven't really lost, how would I lose an edge here? This eraser dried out, let me see if this one's better. So I could lose the edge here, easy on the top. And I can smudge that very quickly with my finger in a, in a life drawing class situation. Uh, if you have a, a tough, hard hand, I could, um, a hand that is shaky, I meant to say, I could soften her hair. This hair is very, very soft. And um, so I'm trying to implement things now in a much, much quicker way. There's no background uh, outline. There's no big, solid background tone. I'm keeping things extremely simple within the portrait i can come on in here and use my eraser and draw with my eraser as well and i can do that reflected light that we had over there and i can experiment with that i can lose the edge down over here just kind of draw with my eraser and uh, it starts to soften the whole thing up okay so you can see what the brush does and if i put these two i can't put them side by side because the monitor is too skinny but this is your pencil without the brush this is your pencil with the brush. It depends on the look that you're trying to create, okay? This is more of a painterly, painterly way to draw. This is more of a quick linear way to draw. I like both, okay? It depends on what, what the drawing of the day is gonna be. Um, now, can you guys bear with me? I wanna go very quickly over to my bookcase and see if I cannot find the Harris Burdick book. One moment. I found it. I am organized. Okay, I, the, I showed this book so much that the cover is destroyed. This is the name of the book. Is the blue band on your pencil significant for some reason? Um, so Sandy, what happens with that um, is with the, whatchamacallit, the, the skew for the pencil, do you see how it starts to come off like that? And there's like that sticky glue underneath. I hate sticky hands. And so that kind of bumps up on me and, and I just hate it. And then uh, I remember when I was in uh, college and I went to all those college parties with my friends, um, I'd always peel the label on the beer bottle like that. And so by the end of the night, the, the label would be off of a couple of beers. And I do that with it and it drives me crazy. So the reason for the blue tape is to get rid of that stickiness because if there's one thing that I hate with my fingers when I draw is sticky fingers. So that just kind of deals with that situation. Now, um, hopefully that answered your question. So let me show you a couple of images in this book. Okay, this is how I feel you wanna draw with tone. I mean, this is, I, I, I could teach the whole class on this. Let me show it to you this way, on this drawing right over here. This is classic tone, okay? So when I ask you guys, what do you look at first? I look at the glasses, I look at the guy, and then I look at the table. Maybe you look at the table first and then you look at the guy, but look at the piece of furniture to the left, I think to the left, to the side of the guy, the dark furniture. See how it has a soft edge? See how it blends? Look, look at the photos hanging on the wall. Do you see how they um, are not as white as the lamp and they're softer edged? Look at the fabric on the table, how hard edge it is where it meets the shadow. Okay, here's the, here's the kicker. And for those of you who've been with me for a while, I'll share it with you in a moment, Sandy. Um, 
look at the value ratios on the clothing. So dark pants, perfect value ratios. Middle tone sweater, perfect value ratios. Light shirt, perfect value ratios. So this guy is amazing. Um, this is the title of the book. Let me show you one more in here, okay? Oh God, yeah, they're so good. This one's cool. With tone, look at the soft edge of the girl blending into the background. Look at the value ratios of the sheets there. So what did I say at the beginning of this drawing? Every drawing needs to have three values. The table is the dark, the lamp is the middle tone, the fabric, the girl, and the nightgown are the light, and the book is the light. Three values, okay? Last one here. Oh God, they're all good. I'm having a hard time picking. This is a, a, if you like drawing with tone, this book's a must have. Okay, this one is just awesome. I don't want to ruin the, the book. So what do we have in this piece? A light, a middle tone, and a dark. Hard edges, soft edges. And the, here's the most important thing you've got to remember from this is that the values are solid, okay? I'm not saying, um, okay, I, I'm not saying you have to draw in this style, but yeah, this is a, a great way to think about tone in a solid way. That's as big as I can make it. That's the book. Okay, so I don't know Chris Van Allsburg, uh, but I've used his book in my classroom for many, many, many years, and I would recommend that you go out and buy that book. He, he has other books as well, but this one I think is the best one, um, okay? So uh, without further ado, does anybody have any questions before we wrap up this live stream? I might work on this a little bit um, today, but. No questions. Okay. I'll wait a couple seconds because there's a little bit of a delay. And my dog is starting to snore and with this microphone, you're gonna um, probably hear it. All right. Cool. Yeah, you guys got it. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Uh, you know, this seems very simple and very fundamental, but this is the question. Um, Aurora, yeah, if you have a question, definitely you want to ask it now. Sean Pan book, The Arrival. Okay. Oh boy, I got to get the dog. She's really concerning form and the forum and the critique. Thank you, Ileana, for joining. I really do appreciate that. Any questions about the teaching, just ask me, okay? Let me go get my dog as a couple more questions are coming in. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Um, when I put something, the critique, You got it, Irene, you're welcome. Thank you, Ruka, for joining us. Joyce, thank you. If you guys have recommendations for a live stream, um, please email me, okay, with the understanding that it's usually only in an hour. So sometimes people ask me for things and it's just, it's impossible for me to do it in an hour. Thank you, Nancy. No, if you want, uh, uh, forums on drawingtutorialsonline.com are just, um, Irene, the brush is just a simple canvas Bristol brush. Uh, the forums are for asking questions, and the critique gallery is for posting your artwork. Uh, the forums are not for critiques, they're just for questions. Thank you. See Morsha. Thank you, Joseph, for joining us. 
No, don't I'll put it in the forum because I never critique images in the forum, Aurora. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. And uh, yeah, you got it, Aurora. Yeah, if you guys have. Um... Awesome, Sandy. Remember, if you have suggestions, please email me. I would really appreciate that. Doesn't need to be a long email. And I, I, I very much appreciate you guys joining me here today. So I, um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. I'm going to work on this a little while after, but I don't think I'm going to do a live stream on Facebook today. Maybe I'll see. I never like to count anything out. I've not drawn this dog. Uh, I've drawn my old pug. Yeah, take care, Amit. See you guys. Yeah, the pets would be a good thing, um, no doubt. She has good light and shade hidden her right now. Uh, thank you, Dana. Happy birthday. Enjoy the day. All right, cool. See you guys.